Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, it's Monday, Mishmash Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. Boy, they go fast, don't they? I remember when I was working, you know, your days off just fly by. And usually you got so many things to do on your days off. You know, it's bad enough that you only get a couple days off a week. But when you have all these other things you got to squeeze in there, you really can't enjoy yourself. And But just hang in there. Retirement, uh, that's, where it's, well, that's where it's at. <laughs> Every day is like a Saturday, and you just uh, it just gets better and better. Okay, uh, today we got a couple things to talk about. Uh, I made an eBay purchase a while back, and I said maybe we'll hit that today. You know, I got to see how I feel. Let's take a look at it and make our decision. Okay, I just thought I'd do a little show and tell. We're not going to be doing these today, but uh, upcoming projects. These I got on eBay, and what these are. Um, first of all, this is a reed. See this reed here, number eleven. It's a uh, spring-loaded wrench here. And you can see it was Erie, Pennsylvania, and I believe the date is uh, August 10th, uh, 1897, which is uh, pretty cool, huh? Now, uh, we got some issues here. You see down here, you know, obviously this was at one time wire brushed or whatever, but I'm sure the rust was so bad it ate away the bottom here. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, getting that knurling to look good. But it is, it's spring-loaded. What you do is, you see it's spring-loaded like this. You put it on, and then it would grip. And you can see it has some aggressive teeth on here. Which, what I find amazing is this whole tooth assembly. You see here, from it's got three screws that hold it on. One in the front here, one right there. And you can see this whole jaws are replaceable here, the bottom. And uh, with these three screws, two, one in the front and these two, and this whole assembly comes off. So I think that's pretty interesting. Nice little wrench. And I actually bought the lot. I paid $20 shipped for the two wrenches for this one here. And I saw this, uh, I think Resto Rob did one, but it might have been a Bonnie. I don't know which one he did. But this is a Victor from uh, Kreuter. And you could just barely make it. I see Victor right there. And uh, you could see the patent date on here. Um, it says November, what is that? May 26, maybe 1903? Or is that an 8? You'll be able to tell better than me when you're looking at it. But, um, you can see it's one of them adjustable alligator wrenches here. What I thought was interesting about this one here is it's got a, which is kind of worn too, you see how much it was used, but it's got a curved thumb wheel which is really interesting but I said boy this you know would polish up real nice because it's got screws you know so you could take it apart however the screws are peened over into these little round uh you can't take it apart it it you know these once I think they're screwed in they're peened over and I uh I took out the dirt using a dental pick using and this is the first thing you have to do always you got to take a dental pick like this and you got to dig out any of the dirt in here which is really caked in you can see here if you try and put a screwdriver in there you're just going to strip it out so you got to get it everything cleared out like this then you're going to have to use some heat and you know what's to stop this back piece from you know spinning or what i might have to drill it out and come across some new screws so before i start that project i'm going to have to do some serious thinking but it is a beautiful wrench when it would be cleaned up so that's on the project list. Now for today, I just wanted to get this. I wanted to do this. This I know it looks like a quick job, and it can be a quick job, or it can be a you know these any time something looks easy, it usually takes longer than it does. Anyway, we got this uh, proto that we uh, we're talking about the other day. I picked up at the Elephant's Trunk for a couple dollars. You can see it's proto. It's Los Angeles. Uh, it was tight at the show, but it loosened up a little bit. And you can see the condition it's in. You can see we got some damage to the front here. You see that? A little damage there. The balls on these are usually pretty nice. But you can see here that it's got some... Let me get better lighting here. It's got some, you know, rust all around. And I think there's writing. I think it says Proto. Can you see that there? And uh, something 1308. But anyway, the handle is extremely long. And... Now, here's the funny thing. I told you I like shorthand. I use them all the time, short handle. But if the head is too light, real light like this, a short handle doesn't give... It's it's a strange thing. It's a balance on a hammer is something you have to pick up. And you can see now, the back of this is totally damaged. You can see here it's split, it's damaged. So we're going to have to take at least a, an inch off. But I want to keep the proto. And I love this octagon handle. It's got you know three sides on top here three sides here and then the two sides that's an octagon but it just feels so nice and 
you know, so we're going to see if we could save the handle, tighten it up, just do a quick one. And, uh, and like I said, it, it, you got to feel the hammer and you, you run your hand up and down. And you say, wow, this is the sweet spot right here. So we'll see what we can do. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see the model number is Proto 1308-P. And uh, you can see here, well, I was talking about, about the damage in the face, you know. That must, I don't know what they hit with this, but uh, they hit something hard. And uh, again, these are made, you know, the lightweights like this are made for, I guess the 08, it might be 8 ounce. It's made for tapping, you know, and things like that and small duty. That long handle gives you a lot of swing leverage, so you got to be careful. But now we're going to cut off the bottom. Remember what that looks like. We'll cut off the bottom, scrape down the handle and see what we're going to do with the head, how we can do that. And then we'll tighten it up a little bit. So it's coming good. Okay, 15 minutes with the straight edge razor blade and you can see and you can see the sheen you see that sheen on there Scraping is such a superior way to finish wood. You know, you could put a finish on right after scraping. It's smooth It's nice, but you know, we'll do an additional sanding especially because scraping it might screw up the letters here So you got to go over this lightly with sandpaper But you see how we chamfered that back edge and you see how important that is now doesn't that hammer look a little bit more balanced now with a little, just, you know, we only took off about an inch and a half, but definitely looks more balanced. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's a beautiful hammer. Now, before we do any uh, serious, we got a little, we're going to address all this, but uh, first we're going to clean up the head. We're going to uh, polish that up and uh, see, so let's get to that. Okay, we're coming along nicely with this uh, hammer as you can see now what we're gonna do is uh, To get this handle. It's it's only a very little bit loose So what we're gonna do is gonna beat the tar out of it from the bottom Smash it up this way and you can see there's a little recess that'll bring that up a little bit And then I'll show you what we'll do from there Okay, you see we brought that up a little bit. Can you see it right there? It, we brought it up uh, maybe a 32nd of an inch. You see that? And it is tight as can be. However, if you look at the top here, you can see we have a little bit of a, you see that? Just a slight bit of a gap near the front there. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two things. We're going to pound this steel wedge down a little bit. And we're going to add a little mini wedge in the front there just to bring that forward and lock it in so we'll never have that problem again now to uh to make a mini wedge i'm using these old flooring nails these are these are super hardened and uh, they'll break before they bend these are really good so uh, you can use if you had a needed a bigger wedge you could take the top here and you break it off in the vise you don't try and cut these and if you do cut them you cut them with a dremel or wizard wheel or something because they're very hard to cut but you could just break them off and uh we're going to use a smaller one here, and uh, and then we'll just grind it down and make a little mini wedge. Okay, here's the little mini wedge we made, and we're just going to drive that right into here. That'll just separate a little bit and, and it just lock it in, because it is tight, but I'll lock it in for okay, sure. Okay, the dake, everybody's favorite. You can see here how we have it set up. We're just going to press that wedge into there, only because I like using it. Okay, now we're at the point where we're, uh, I ground that down a little bit. You see, I pushed that in, that pin, that thing. Now this thing is super, super, super tight, not going anywhere. I'm going to try and do something with the letters to try and get them a little bit more pronounced and finish it. And then we'll see what we got going. Okay, here's a part I don't usually include in the restorations. This is the almost finished part. And the reason I don't do that is because, let's take a look at it, okay? You see, we got the Proto Tools nice in here. We, you know, every one of these facets we kept, you know, looks beautiful, right? The wood has a nice grain to it. This is one coat of shellac on here with uh, some gunstock stain underneath. You can see we polished out the head. We didn't paint any, but you can see the Proto is still there. 
you know, it's polished. It looks nice, right? Everything looks nice. Now, here's the point. <laughs> look at the face. Remember what the face looked like, right? So, and the top, of course, you know, nice and solid. Put one coat of linseed oil, but I'm going to have to keep doing that for a while. Anyway, uh, so here's your dilemma, you know, do you leave it like this? Because you, you, a lot of times you say, oh, it looks good. I want to leave it. So we're going to try and do a little bit more. But the funny thing is, the reason I don't usually show this part is because inevitably, there will be somebody that will leave a comment and go, ah, you should have left it the way it was. It looked good the way it was, you know. So this is where, that's why a lot of times you're better off just showing the before and the after. Because when you show the midway, there's always going to be the group of people out there that says, ah, you ruined it. You should have left it. You ruined it. <laughs> anyway, you know my favorite part. Remember what this hammer looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. You see what we did there? <laughs> Now, uh, you know this red here, this is, as you know, this hammer here that we did a while ago on the show, this was is one of my favorite hammers. I use this th every day almost, but you see what I did here with the uh, the red, you know, when, when I put that red paint on there, how I, I wanted it to be like a stain instead of a paint so that it shows the grain through. Well, I became addicted to that look, and I did the same thing with this here. If you look really closely, you could see the uh, the gr you could see the grain of the wood, the stain through here. It just it's it looks so nice, don't it? I mean, and then of course we did the uh, the top up here with the red. I always think that pops, and you could see here that Proto makes this uh, same hammer in a uh, well 16 ounce, but they they have the same color scheme as they have here. And uh, you can see, um, and, and they also have these become quite collectible hammers, like I said, with the octagon handle. A lot of people look for them, and some of them are very pricey. But uh, I do like green and stuff, but I am making a Scout Crafter Junior tool kit, and I'm going to put a, a bunch of tools in there, and that's why I want to keep the color scheme the same, the red. And uh, I did with the gun stock, and now there's two coats of shellac. There's one coat of shellac I put on after the paint. So that means that there's no transition line here, and it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's a nicely, and I, I love the size of it. Again, with the lightweight hammer heads, it's nice to have a, a slightly longer hammer because, uh, you know, uh, a handle rather, because when you're dealing with such a lightweight head, you know, tapping it like this, it, it just gives you a little bit more. So it's just a great little hammer, and I'm telling you, this one's a nice one. The octagon handle is so nice because when you pick it up, it lets you register that you know exactly where that head is because of the handle, you know, the lines in the handle. You build up a memory here. And when you pick this up, you know right where it is. Whereas some, you know, you don't, that's why they don't make round hammer handles because you, you never know where the head is. Very nice hammer. Well worth the uh, $2 I think I paid at the uh, Elephant Trunk. Yeah, uh, Proto. Fun little project. So in closing, I have such a great time with the uh, simple tools, you know, that's, that's a lot of fun. And even though that tool is as simple as it is, it does take a couple days between the drying time of each coat you put on there, and it's not as easy as it looks. Um, next up, uh, I got a kind of a favor to ask of you, and, uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, a good friend of the show, and has been for a couple of years now, 805 Road King, a great guy, Met him at Jacktown, uh, and you know I've been subscribed for a long time, but he has a great little channel. But here's the thing. He's at 99.8 thousand subscribers. He's almost at 100,000. We could put him over the top. Can you imagine that? I mean, I'm just a dinky little channel, but we only need a couple hundred subscribers to put him into the 100,000 superstar status, and he'll get his little silver button, and that'll be our doing. So I'm asking you as a favor to me, go check out his channel, hit the subscribe button. Let's get him over the top to 100,000. I mean, we could do it. Our channel could, you know, could be the one responsible for, for putting him over. So if you're not already subscribed, please, 805 Road King. I'll have the link in the description. And uh, thanks so much. I hope you have a great day, start of a new week. Take care now. Bye-bye.